Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to talk about something I feel very strongly uh, about today, uh, international trade and how trade can promote understanding and build bridges uh, over differences. But let me start with two stories. When I went to school, I was very keen on learning languages. Uh, one of them was German. Uh, so I went down to Munich to study and live with a host family. Uh, the very first day, the father of the house came and greeted me with a very polite, Hi, my name is Karl. Guten Tag, ich heiße Karl. Mentally, I hadn't really landed in Germany. I kind of thought that he was wondering if I was cold. <laughs> so I kind of shook his hand and said politely, uh, Nein, no. Carl was thoroughly kind of confused because he knew that his name was Carl and had always been Carl. Uh, so bewildered but still confident, he continued, Doch, ich heiße Karl. <laughs> For sure, my name is Carl. Well, I kept smiling, shaking his hand, saying, Nein, nein, überhaupt nicht, not at all. <laughs> it took us another Poor Carl, it took us another five minutes shaking hands, finally agreeing that yes, his name was Carl, and no, I was not freezing. A couple of years later, I studied the Russian language, and I had a friend, let's call her Mary. Uh, she went down to, to, to Russia, or east to Russia, um, to, to, to learn the Russian language to St. Petersburg, and again to live with a host family. So um, when she came to the host family, she wanted to tell them you know, about her home country, as you do, and um, she decided to tell them about her dog, Toby. Um, he was a very happy dog. She used to take the dog to the park. Uh, the dog liked other dogs, and when it was happy, it wagged its tail. So in Russian, the word for dog is sabaka. And apparently, very easily to confuse with another word, kalbasa, which means sausage. <laughs> so Mary had told her uh, host family about her sausage named Toby. <laughs> it was a very happy sausage. <laughs> uh, she used to take the sausage to the park. <laughs> the sausage liked other sausages, <laughs> and it was when it was happy it wagged its tail. <laughs> well, the Russian family thought that this was all so very peculiar, <laughs> strange people, um, and it, again, it took a while to sort out. Well, in both cases, the misunderstandings led to understandings. The confusion created instead an opportunities for laughs. And I have, since in my life, um, kept misusing languages, pretty good at that, I'd say, uh, but not also in an international business context, and today I work for, for government, so you could say the opportunities have just, they've just multiplied. <laughs> I do, however, try to stay away from misunderstandings and focus on un-understanding, because that is kind of core to both uh, trade as well as business in general. On a more serious note, according to McKinsey um, Economic Snapshot, business leaders identify geopolitical risk um, as a major, if not top, threat to uh, economic growth. Disputes, um, military uh, activities and gruesome terrorist deeds shake our beliefs and make us doubt and think about our future. So only also as with that as a backdrop or as a scene setter, creating more understanding is, is really important and I think of great value. So I'm going to talk about three things today. I'm going to talk about um, you know, what does trade do for the economy. I'm going to talk about how to promote trade. And thirdly, I'm going to stay for a second or two to talk about you know, does can um, trade create a greater understanding. 
But before I dive into the subject, I'd like to just you know, acknowledge the healthy discussion that goes on around trade. And we have questions like, for example, how can we train uh, in a sustainable way? Um, how can we strike a balance between trading uh, between, um, between um, um, developing countries as well as industrial countries? And, and how can we um, you know, make sure that we distribute the resources in a good way, both internationally and locally? And many, many other questions. But for now, I'm going to keep it simple, and I'm going to talk from my perspective as someone who is, is promoting, working with promoting trade. Because I do believe that uh, trade can contribute to a lot of good. And just in the same way as the desire to get to know people and create understanding and connect can be a driving force to learn a foreign language, so the desire to trade can be a driving force to understand people and to connect. Simply put, we need each other. Well, the challenge is on, so let's start with trade. Uh, what does trade do for the economy? And may I just apologize to begin with, this is going to be a bit ABC, very basic, uh, but please bear with me. So trade is exchanging products and services for money or other products and services. But why do we trade? Uh, wh what is it that makes us want to do buy and you know, kind of sell from each other? What it has to do with satisfying needs. It has to do with um, having differences that creates opportunities. You have what I want and I have what you want. It has to do with what we call comparative advantages. Uh, and these can exist in a couple of things, scientific and technological differences, land, labor, capital and entrepreneurship. So let's take the example of land. In one country, we have uh, mild weather, we can grow crops, it's fantastic for food production. In another country, kind of rainy, but we have iron ore, um, so we can produce large-scale machines. So the theory of trade is that these two countries should then specialize, so they should do what they're good at, and then they should trade freely, because that will provide the most value for everybody involved and make the best use of our resources. And how do we measure then um, trade? Well, trade feeds into our GDP concept. Um, and the GDP concept is trying to measure how well off a country is. So um, if we trade more, export in this case, that will feed into the GDP concept, and that will mean that the GDP concept will grow for the country, and if it's all work the right way, then our joint resources or our joint kind of uh, well-off being will grow. Um, so that is trade. Let's put that over there. The second thing is then how do we promote trade? If this is right, if trade is good for the economy, how do we build a strategy uh, that can make use of all of our kind of uh, abilities and resources? And as we were talking, just mentioned, um, these comparative advantages, the differences, that's scientific and technological differences or progress, um, it's uh, land, labor, capital and entrepreneurship. So to further trade, we should just focus on furthering it all. But we get into this situation where we don't have enough time and resources. This is a dilemma of scarcity. Uh, how should we do this? And that's where my job gets really kind of important, but thorny at the same time. How can we solve this puzzle of trying to optimize our resources? Well, trying to harvest low-hanging fruits and then putting the most resources on our mission-critical activities, that could be a strategy to use. And here's where political flavor comes in, because mission-critical activities, we can have different views of what that is. But the idea, at least, of not putting a lot of resources on activities that do not create strong benefits, we could, just, that we could maybe all agree on to take away. One low-hanging fruit is trade barriers. According to a, a Danish economist, Mr. Bjorn Lundberg, and a team of economists looking at the UN Sustainability Development Goals, uh, concluding that among these goals, the biggest bang for the buck will actually be to take away trade barriers through negotiation of free trade agreements. That will make the biggest bang. So according to Mr. Lundberg, 
kind of completing all the treaties that we at the moment have uh, in the World Trade uh, Organization negotiated, complete them one um, dollar for every $3,426 will contribute then to the economies of uh, developing countries. Uh, and now we have, this is a kind of an unplugged version of TED. So uh, here comes uh, a puzzle with 3,000, I had to buy two puzzles. Uh, they didn't have a big puzzle enough in the toy store. Uh, so just, uh, this is a low hanging fruit. One piece of puzzle and 3,426 pieces of puzzle in this box. It's a, it's a pretty big one. So, um, free trade agreements, we should promote those and we should take away trade barriers. But we're still kind of, we're still stuck there with this, um, you know, our kind of resources and, you know, how, what should we do with them? These, these kind of different differences, should, should we promote? What should we do with them? Um, uh, and then it's a question, like, there's no kind of, there's no strategy to fit them all. We don't have one size for everybody. Um, so what we do is that we can, of course, look at mathematical models, right? Uh, this most simplistic way of looking up at what's going to happen tomorrow is to look at the past. So, um, you know, if you look at what happened yesterday, that will give us a pretty good idea what will happen tomorrow. We can collect statistics and we can work with heuristic models. And this is what we do at most times of our day. This is like going to search engines, looking at weather forecasts, like the advertisement that goes into your uh, social media feed. It's all built on historical statistics. But if you don't have the right statistics, or if there's too many variables, you just can't make sense of them all, which is, you know, happens most of the time, really. I had a quick look in this morning on my social media feed uh, and at advertisements. And I'm supposed to like hotels in London, um, you know, subscribe to a TV station, and cooking knives. Well, um, <laughs> and that was quite random um, because I do travel a bit to the UK, so that makes sense with the hotels. I'd never watch TV, and I'm a really lousy cook. Um, so, <laughs> but but still, even so. Um, the statistical models are irrelevant, and with technological development, we're going to kind of get them more sophisticated. The appro approximations are going to be much better fitted. So in a year or two or three or 10, when I go back and take a look at my social media feed again, for sure, it's not just going to be UK hotels that fits, but it's going to be a book that I really like to read, how to develop my yoga, um, and not having me kind of watch TV in the kitchen. So, if we have uh, all these opportunities to work with, with data, where is the room for creativity? Where is the room for imagination? Where is the drive and force to, to change? Where is, where is those sudden events that you couldn't, you couldn't picture? Where are the black swans? A black swan is a con concept. It's, it's not something that happened yesterday. It wasn't something you could foresee, but you only can rationalize it in hindsight. So an example of a black swan is um, in 2010, when you had this, um, everybody, like the media, were monitoring uh, the kind of different flus that was going on, uh, go going on in the world, but it ended up that a big kind of volcanic ash cloud closed down the whole uh, aircraft and air travel in Europe. So, and where is serendipity? Where is room for that? when Alexander Fleming, for example, discovered penicillin in 1928. Um, just that a lucky chance. We need to take a look at, you know, be open to uncertainty, use our imagination, uh, have put our eyes on the irrational, talk to people and get their perspectives. To humbly quote Albert Einstein, logic will get you from A to B, but imagination will take you everywhere. So, and then we have our results, we have our trade, we have our trade strategy, we've done all the other things, created, thought about, you have to admit, imagination, we've done all of these other things that this is just not kind of hard figures, and then we need to take action. Way too often we spend time on just um, thinking. Analyzing is not the end, it's the means. So trade, trade strategy, but how does this affect us? How can um, trade 
really kind of create more understanding. So we were talking about differences and comparative advantages. So if places and circumstances are different, well, maybe people are too, or? Well, trade makes people communicate. And if you communicate, you start to understand, and you understand each other. And that opens the door to empathy. So communication and interdependence can prevent conflict. According to a, pa to a paper from 2008, does tra trade integration uh, contribute to peace? A 10% increase in bilateral trade volumes can decrease the possibility or the risk of military conflict between two neighboring countries with 1.9%. And according to the same uh, paper, an increase in global trade openness of 10% will then decrease the um, probability or the risk of military conflict between two countries of 2.6%. And Thomas Friedman, the New York Times um, columnist, he coined the expression, the, uh, the Big Mac thesis. Uh, he, he claimed that um, two countries with a Big Mac, as a f like a McDonald's franchise, have never gone to war. It's based on the idea that you know, if your country is open and developed enough to be home for an international franchiser as McDonald's, or any others, I guess, um, the whole idea of war as a foreign policy option is not very attractive. Well, differences is not about just um, um, you know, the opportunities to have to trade. It's not about just the comparative advantages. It's also about um, the possibility to, to understand our similarities and what we can share and to create understanding. So I did learn some German and I did learn some Russian. Um, and just in the same way as the desire to understand people and connect is a driving force to learn a foreign language, so the desire to trade is a driving force to understand and connect with other people and culture. At the end of the day, humans are social animals. Fighting tooth and claw will never get us to progress and succeed, but the ability and willingness to cooperate will. So this is what makes me get up uh, every morning and take on the trade challenge as a very satisfying thing to do. So what is my call to action? Is that for you to go out and trade more? Or perhaps uh, understand each other more? Yes, of course, for sure. That's why I'm here. That's what I spent my time with. But it's also about making yourself happy, about finding interesting work that you think have a purpose. And that is my call to action. The challenge is on.